Let's talk about Herm and the Sun Devils. Antonio Pierce has resigned. He was the recruiting coordinator, the defensive coordinator. He kind of, at least from the talk, spearheaded some of this stuff with getting recruits on campus during the COVID dead period. Along with that, there were a lot of different unsubstantiated rumors about how he was one of those that spearheaded a bit of a coup against the head coach, Herm Edwards. He has officially resigned from his position at Arizona State, and now you've got seven, eight guys that have lost their gigs due to this NCAA stuff, and yet Herm has not lost his. I think at this point, knowing what we know and seeing all those that have been let go or have left on their own, quote-unquote, I think that we are figuring out that Herm Edwards is going to be around for a while. Remember, the AD at Arizona State is his former agent. So it's they're trying to run this like an NFL thing. They let too many guys get involved and try and run it behind the scenes, and Herm was just going to coach, etc. Uh, I'm curious if, if this was anybody else as the AD. Would they be forced to make a change based on what is going on with this recruiting cycle? Because... They finished number 12 in the Pac-12, dead last, and they are number 105 nationally in the recruiting rankings. That that is behind UNLV, South Alabama, Georgia State, Western Michigan, and UConn. The recruiting rankings this year were bad for Arizona State. But if if it's anybody else, are they gone just based on the recruiting stuff? No, 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 no. I I think this is the... This is probably the deal with the NCAA, if I had to guess, that was made. And I'll tell you this. I actually like – maybe I think this because I want this to be true. Because this is how I would run things, by the way. If I'm the NCAA, you've lost so much power and so much leverage over the years. You virtually are a toothless organization. So, in order to to put up some semblance of doing something, let's, let's work behind the scenes. Let's not be seen, and let's make deals. Let's basically plea bargain things down, and nobody is the wiser. And these guys get fired. These guys get let go. This is the skin that you're going to give us. This is the pound of flesh. We're going to take one recruiting class because we're in such transitional limbo here, and then we got to rebuild up, but we don't get hammered with sanctions or probation or, you know, the bowl money is just so much. And, and if we think, you know, uh, the, the playoffs are going to expand, then we know the Pac-12 is going to get in eventually. We don't want to lose that money by by uh, 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 bowl bans and things like that. So let's let's make deals, okay? And that's what I think happened here. I think a deal was struck. I think a deal was made, um, and and I think this was agreed upon. I also believe if you think Herm is the guy, then you don't care about this year's recruiting class. You, you're you looking for the future. You're looking big picture, and you're going to try to build something that can last and sustain. The, the What's important with that is you don't want to fire your coach because of something that happened if you can avoid it and you think he's the guy. I've said this with Ole Miss and, and Hugh Freeze. There's no way on earth if I was, uh, if I was Ross Bjork I would have fired Hugh. I just wouldn't have. I would have taken all the bad heat. I'd have taken all the bad publicity and you could have yelled and screamed at me, but I had my guy, damn it. And we're going to win football games as soon as the probation's over with. Okay. If I was Tennessee, I would have never fired Bruce Pearl. I would have fought the NCAA from, from pillar to post. I would have sat him for however long they told me to sit him. And then once his penalty is paid, Bruce is going to come back on this court. He's going to rip his shirt off and we're going to go back to winning football, uh, basketball games. Yeah, well, and your I, your program actually and I, did this, and, and it worked and out. I cannot believe, I cannot believe LSU had the balls. or the first program that I know of that really had the balls to do this with Will Wade. And guess what? To this point, nothing has happened. Nothing has True. happened to them at all. So why would you have fired him? And all of the sports writers in the world are just up in arms, and oh, my God, and I can't believe they just – they still won't fire him. And then all of the people that hate LSU, all of the SEC foes around, criticized. Now, I can't believe you would keep a guy like this on staff. No one, every son of a bitch at Ole Miss, would knife three people before Lane Kiffin came in their life to get <laughs> to get Hugh back. So, And I know several that would knife three random people right now to get Hugh over Lane. So 
I know that that's a small, insane minority, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but but I'm just I'm just telling you that I think if you're the NCAA, when LSU stood up and said, "Do your worst, and we'll do ours, and we'll just see what happens," I think the the people at the NCAA stepped back and said, "Man, we are taking L's all over the place. It is better for us to be." Never, no one ever see our L's at all, and us get something, even if we don't get credit for doing it. I, I think you might be onto something here because really that's do. the only way I can think this played out the way it did. By the way, oh, yeah, I, I don't think they would have fired these people on their own or forced them to resign on their own, on, on the goodness of their heart. No, but they lost the, both coordinators. Now, the folk, hang on, the folks that were part of the coup, oh, I absolutely think that. Them hitting the door, that's that's par for the course, and that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Hearn's got to find people that can recruit because I don't think he's doing that. But but I don't – and those NFL guys you're bringing ain't doing it either. But I, I think he can do that, and he can find people to do that that won't set a coup. Uh, agreed. Uh, agreed 100%. Which, hey, by the way, you brought up Hugh Freeze. This is way off topic from this, but – if if Harson does not work out, oh god! If I was Auburn, I'm I'm t- look when I, LSU's job was open, I was like, hey man, you know, if if we start getting down to the nitty and nobody's coming, like we're missing out on guys, then well, I, but that's I, the that's the thing. To calling you, LSU could get a Brian Kelly. That's right, right? That's right. I don't think no, that Auburn, Auburn could. What Auburn's been through. And what they've done, dealt with, they cannot. They cannot. And here's the thing: it's a natural progression. If you were to pair up SEC team, SEC team for SEC team, and match them for 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 who is very more common or like, there there are a few there are a few commonalities you're going to find, unlike the Plains and Oxford. Okay, agreed. Very very agreed. similar, in my opinion. My opinion is just one man's opinion that's been around the SEC a little bit. My opinion, I think they're very similar. I think the way the organization is, Auburn, I think is substantially bigger and a lot more money, deeper pockets. But at the end of the day, very, I think they're ran very similarly. Agreed. Agreed. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.